Right, right, build up. So as I said, ask your question. Okay, so, build up. I'll give you a joke first. Somebody called me, they have been researching us. Um, this was a guy, and then he was like, I want you, um, how much you charge to take the lint out of my locks? Like, I have locks everywhere, and I want lint out of my locks. And then he was, I was like, sorry? And he said, uh, I, like, I just want it removed. And I was like, it's not, it's not a service we provide. And he was like, well, why not? And I was like, because I don't want to provide that service. He's like, but you could make a lot of money doing it. I said, yeah, but it does nothing for me. I don't want to. And did I, did I, did I tell you I needed to make more money? I just, it's not, just not a service I provide. And I explained to him that there might be somebody out there who provides this lint removal service, but it's not M&H. <laughs> Removing lint. Lint. Lint is nobody's favourite thing. And unfortunately, with regards to build up and lint, some people are prone to it and some people aren't. If you have loose afro and you've observed your loose afro, you will notice that your, lo your loose afro has lint in it, has something in it. So when you lock your hair, you're likely to be one of those people who would attract lint or the build up. Right, now lint is the light fibres, little fibres that kind of settle onto your locks and then um, embed itself and become the structure of the locks. Build up is residue from products um, and therefore lets, makes your hair look dull basically because all the products has not been removed if that makes sense. That is the difference between lint and build up. But both are issues and both are problem. Um, now, lint, one of the best ways to make sure you don't have lint is if you know you're prone to, your hair's prone to kind of sucking up the fiber, is do not wear loose fibered um, material. I have a traditional locks transfer client that has sweet products that build up, sweat products that build up. Um, you have cl a client who, I didn't understand that, who has products to remove lint. I didn't understand that. Um, clarify, Lisa, please. So basically, if you have loose fibres, that fibre is likely, like walls, like this, can easily um, cause um, lint build-up. Welcome, my sister Lux journey. Um, something like this could easily ca cause um, lint. Um, maybe a fabric, um, a jacket that you're always wearing. Hi! Um, a pashmina, the, the woolly scarves could create lint buildup. Um, so the, the best way is if you, wore, if you wear something, like we say avoid this, right? But I, I clearly don't. Um, and um, you want to make sure you haven't had it embedding it in your locks. One of the things you could do is just check, dust off or... Take the lint roller, you know, the lint roller that you'd use on clothes um, and you could use it um, to roll um, off every day. Make sure you've just got the lint roller and you so you pick up any loose ones. Your 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 client has built up that consists of dirt, sweat and product build up. Oh, my God, Lisa. Oh, God, palpitations. OK. Um, so, um, I, I don't understand the sweat thing, Lisa, I don't, palpitations, I don't, because I'm into the clean, fresh look, it just, like, no, okay, so, these tips might help you, but it is possible that I might not be able to help that situation, but I'll try my best, okay, so, as I said to you about the lint, <laughs> the loose fibres, um, the lint roller, um, would help, um, and, um, there's lint-free towels and like old t-shirts that have been used and used and used. When you wash your hair and you're drying it, like I had he have head wraps from way back, um, that don't have the loose fiber. Use that to dry your hair. Be aware of the towel you're using. Make sure the towel is dark so it matches the color of your hair so that if lint goes in even, it kind of embeds itself and it doesn't necessarily look obvious because it's not white. Um, uh, it's not lightly colored gray, it's brown or dark like your hair. 
So the type of towel you're using, make sure it's lint free. Make sure you don't have any loose fibers around your hair and, and understand your hair. Is your hair prone to su sucking up that lint? Some people aren't. Um, so if you've tried that um, and if you've tried a great deep cleansing shampoo, obviously everybody knows about the apple cider vinegar and the bicarbonate of soda that can help deep cleanse and remove uh, a certain amount of the lint. But also oiling, if you oil your hair after your hair's been kind of retightened, then it blends in. If you use a sheen, an oil, I mean, that's what, what we, we do. Um, you use the oil and it becomes dark, basically. Um, and it basically isn't obvious. So deep cleaning your hair with the apple cider vinegar, maybe you might start with it for your client, Lisa. It might be uh, uh, maybe once every quarter, um, but, um, or because I don't want like, it can thin out your hair. It can be dangerous using the bicarbonate of soda too often. So it's something that you're supposed to use every quarter, maybe once every three months. Um, if you can come, if you, if you can get hold of Amocado's um, shampoo. Uh, let me see if I've got one here. I'll show you one. Um, Amocado's cap shampoo. This is great. The, oh no, it's back to front. Anyway. You can see the logo to recognize it. It's back to front. That says shampoo. And that says Almocado's Natural. Okay, so stage one, clarification. That says clarification. Stage one, clarification. Seaweed shampoo does the job. That, for me, replaced the um, apple cider vinegar and bicarbonate of soda um, solution to removing, um, yeah, to removing lint. Um, also when you're sleeping, make sure you've got, um, something that you're using that isn't loose fibered. Um, oh good. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're finding it useful. Um, and thank you for the love. Um, but, um, yeah, you need to be aware of how you sleep. Um, i.e. what you use to cover your hair to sleep. Um, is it, is it tending to fly off? Because you do know that there's like things in the atmosphere floating about just waiting to settle so if your hair is not protected then it will settle on your hair so cover your hair make sure you're covering with a lint free fabric head wrap or um, a satin bonnet uh, think about when you're working if you're working hello lady frank b if you're working in an environment where there's dust and particles then please be aware you need to cover your hair, um, protect your hair whilst working. I hope that helps. But I wanted to tell you a story about somebody whose hair we recently locked. I'm sharing their um, hair journey now. That's Roy the Builder, Roy's Locks. I'm sharing his journey now. Roy's a builder and he has got small locks, which, is, which people tend to call sister locks, but he has bespoke small locks, basically. Now, he's a builder, so he works, works obviously on the building site and he has dust. When he first came, uh, before his first retie, it was like, the hair's not moving, it's looking fantastic. And then he came again and it was getting longer and it's looking, but I had a feeling, um, I didn't like how his hair looked. I just didn't like how it looked. It was getting long, but it was thin. And this is why covering your hair, you have to be careful. Are you covering with your head with something very tight that's pressuring down? Because every pressure you pour restricts the lock, fattening up. And what we are trying to achieve is chubby, fat, lush locks. But because he was protecting his hair, he was obsessed with protecting his hair, and he's on an eight-hour shift or longer because he's a builder, he gets home, he takes off the head scarf. But what he's done all day is restrict the hair. And when your hair's locked, it wants movement. It wants to kind of lock and kind of settle quite happily, chubbily. And when you cover too tight and you're like trying to protect the hair, that can affect the hair locking. So I was like, this hair is growing, but I'm not loving it. This is like by the third retie. And then we realized, I was like, it reminds me of my past experience when I had clients who when I didn't know what I was doing, I was lacking in confidence. Um, can you believe I was lacking confidence at one point? Well, I was still learning. Um, but clients were wearing wigs. 
with after installation thank you thank you for the love thank you for the love i'm appreciating it um yeah uh and as a result they had thin hair thin locks the locks weren't fattening up and looking fabulous so we then decided at a certain point that is it we're not taking on anyone who is going to wear a wig after the installation there's no way because the hair is not looking chubby so after that experience then we had Roy, Roy's locks and his locks is long and thin. It just reminded me of it. And then I just got it. It's because he was covering his head too, for too long in the day. He's like, it's just when I'm working, but eight hours or 10 hours in the day, that's a long time to cover your hair. And where oxygen isn't coming, circulating and all the natural things that should happen to help chubby up the locks. So he stopped doing it. And guess what? His locks are fabulous. I mean, I'm sharing it with you now. Um, the images so keep watching because there's more moving images of how his locks is getting on and he looks his locks was on point So a lot of the time when you've done this for a while you kind of get an instinct and intuition You kind of know your client and he and me if I'm not feeling something I don't hold back I say I don't like the way this hair is looking. It's looking a bit thin the other thing that I've I, I realize is we're accused of a lot of things ie generally or sister locks is too thin and it creates hair loss and I always say that it's the hand that deals with your hair that determines whether your hair is fabulous or not. If I see a lot of lint on the client's hair, we have to correct that because you're representing me and I don't want anyone out there with hair that's not on point. I'm strict about that. Now, um, one of our clients colored their hair and as soon as they colored it, even though I, I, it wasn't like too obvious, as soon as I touched it, I just knew that they changed the structure of their locks. And I knew, I understood it was through the colour. Um, so there's a lot of times things have changed. You will notice that the client maybe has a bit more build up and you're like, your hair never used to be like that. Let's talk about your shampoo regime. And you find out that they probably did rinse it off. Um, they didn't wait for the water to clear. And what you need is a shampoo that comes on. You know that the shampoo doesn't necessarily have to be all um, foam feel because obviously that's chemical that gives you the foam um it has to give you a roughness so that you're able to kind of clean the hair quite quickly and then you should see the dirt and you should see the water clear and a lot of the times when um, the water is not clear and there's still that you can see in the water the bubbles then the hair isn't clean don't rush it maybe section your hair how you're washing your hair section it so that you make sure you're rinsing each section a lot of the times our clients, once their hair is matured, we tell them, you don't have to section it anymore to wash it. But they continue sectioning it because their hair is so dense that in the sectioning, they're aware that, okay, I've rinsed that bit, I've rinsed that bit, I've washed that bit, that kind of thing. So how your hair is actually um, rinsed and washed determines how lively your hair will look. If you have buildup on your hair and it's back-to-back buildup, your hair is just going to continue looking dollar and dollar and dollar and what you need is a deep cleansing shampoo and then a moisturizing shampoo later so i use a deep cleansing shampoo as the seaweed shampoo i showed you with avocado and i use their stage two which is the moisturizing shampoo and but one of the rules is i make sure the water is clear and i don't rush it so i hope that helps lisa um you with that um, I've given you enough information from my personal experience so let me know before I sign off if I have covered that or if you want me to elaborate on anything else but that would be my tip is that check out the shampoo make sure it's the right shampoo research what you're putting what what that person is putting on their hair they need to do the research actually Lisa they need to do the research because it's their hair and it's their situation you can help out and give them tips but they need to be aware of what they're putting on their hair, what chemical they're using, what they're wearing against their locks that's picking up the lint. They need to kind of, by process of elimination, figure out what they need to change this. And I talk a lot about attitude, Lisa. A lot of the times the client will sit in the chair and they will give you one line and one story only. But actually, when they're out of the chair, they're doing something else. And you're like, but we talked about this. Why is this still getting worse? So be aware that a lot of the times they would tell you, they could tell you something. And maybe subconsciously or being unaware or being very aware, do whatever they want to do when they're out of the chair. 
So that's why I don't try and internalize people's hair situations. I will share with them my observation. I will give them the advice. We'll give them the advice on what they need to do next. But really, it's up to them to apply. I've told I tell clients, make sure you go, like the UK clients, make sure you go to Aveda to get your hair colored. But some of them choose to color their hair at home. If they choose to color their hair, hair at home and the hair is thinning, it's not Sisilox that's thinning it, it's the chemical you use to color your hair or it's the it's the product you use to wash your hair that's what's creating the problem it's not the loctician and i refuse to take responsibility for other people's hair situation i can advise but i just don't internalize because i know people sleepwalk so it might be that we've talked about things and we've come up with a great solution and then they go off and do something completely different but if it's not changing that is a problem i have never come across that situation where there's been lint build up and it's been a completely kind of, it's not improved. A lot of the time when we pay attention, the situation does improve. Then there's people who are, have amazing locks that do not pick up the lint and they're lucky. But you also can't think just because my sister doesn't pick up lint, my hair shouldn't pick up lint. You have to stay present in your hair, observing your hair to know what works for your hair. I am very lucky. My hair really doesn't pick up lint. That's why I can wear this and be fine and that's why i put the wool in my hair because it's fine other people have tried the wool thing and it's just not worked so that's the message observe your hair observe what works with your hair and do what you can to make sure your hair stays clean i'm one of the people who i can sleep and the head wrap can come off and it doesn't matter i don't really pick up the lint so i'm lucky but it doesn't mean like you get can get away with what i get away with so yeah that's me talking about build up um and lint and Lisa, good luck with your mission. I hope it helps. Um, yeah, I hope it helps. Let me know if it, it's helped. Um, oh, Car Carly J, did you... S I think you might have been kicked out and then you've come back in. But um, you can replay if you've missed anything. But Lisa, let me know if that's okay and um, that is... Uh, that helps you. That's a starting point to help you help your client um to have fresh looking looks clear looks and sometimes um that's all right my sister looks journey sometimes a fresh cut is necessary um you remember a couple of years ago i cut my hair it was a fantastic experience and now it's grown back so sometimes the if the lint is really bad especially at the ends you can give a little cut um, because that bit's old and it's really embedded. The other thing is that, you know, people trying to take the lint out or take it out, you know, it becomes the structure of the locks, right? So you can't do that. You're weakening the hair. And that's why sometimes it's just too good to cut and then change your practices, change the way you wash your hair, change what you put around your locks, make sure you have it up and protected and make sure you're doing the right thing. So as you've cut it, because there's nothing like a fresh cut. I didn't say cut it off. But just cut it down. There's nothing like it. It just breathes life to the hair. And the hair moves again. Because it has to settle back. Because, you know, the ends unravel. And in that, gives that buoyancy again. So there's nothing wrong with kind of cutting it a bit short. Um, I think that's the beauty of sister locks, actually. Is that you have it. It's there. And you should sometimes just cut it. She has a very beautiful sword. And her. I like, I've known her forever. Oh. Oh, are you talking about me? I hope you're talking about me, Carly J. Appreciate it if it's me. If it's not, that person sounds lovely. Yeah, so if you cut it down, sometimes um, it gives you that fresh look. Because the rule number one, you're trying to have clean locks. You're trying to have fresh locks. And like, there's nothing like um, people asking, what is that? And then you say, um, oh, Carly J. And then you say, it's locks. Like, yeah, it's locks, it's dreads. That's what it is. It, it, even people call it rasta. That's, it's what it is. It is, it is locked hair. And then they say, but it's clean. It's nice. It's a compliment. It's like, yeah, that's why I've got it. I, you know, they, they, that's why I've got the hair because it's clean, it's nice, it's fresh. And also, because there's not enough of us, to me, locked up or with this small sister locks, I'm aware I'm representing. So a lot of the times I'd go out and I wouldn't even put makeup on, but my hair is on point because I'm trying to show people, showcase African hair. That African hair is 
fabulous. African hair should be given the respect it deserves and should be given the platform to showcase its beauty. That we don't have enough of that going on. So if you have busted bad locks, cut it off. If you have locks that are so badly spacey and they're patches, bad patches, um, start again. There is nothing wrong with starting again. You could start again. You could have, um, you could have another set of locks that's better. That's okay. I think it's something that we need to kind of get in our hair, but your hair, I'm like, well, I would be biased, but your hair has to be on point. Your hair has to look right, especially if you're moving into the locks movement, because what we're trying to show people is don't stereotype us. We wash our hair regularly. Our hair is clean. Our hair isn't dirty and it's fresh, man, and it's modern and it's up to date and it's current. It's dynamic. It's professional. It's fabulous. And it's our hair. And that's why when people ask, do you do extensions to lock locks? We say no, because there's nothing more prideful than saying it's all my hair. Wow, it looks thick, it looks full. Yes, it's all my hair. So, this is the M of the m &H, signing out of Periscope. Um, yeah, thanks for watching this post. Thanks for watching this broadcast. Share um, and stay blessed, my love. And I'll try my best to come back and answer your questions as and when you message me and when I think of a question or I think of an issue that needs to be discussed I will come back and I will share but before I go you know what this hair needs to come down so I'm gonna take my hair down right I did a quick bun and I've got you see me I've got wool all over my hair right I had my hair in a little bun and I used my little wool thing that I knitted um, and it just doesn't go into my hair and you can see mine is yellow and but somebody else might try it and um, it might not work for them it might be you know riddled in their hair so this is me this is my um, my sister locks thank you and something I do I love to spray and keep my sister locks moisturized because like the plants like the plants, here's the back of my hair. <laughs> like the plants, our hair needs to be watered. Our hair needs to be watered. And remember a couple of years ago I cut my hair and now my hair is kind of back to the initial length I cut it when I was like seven years, six years in. So yeah, this is my sister locks. <laughs> Which I love. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for watching this post. Stay blessed, take care of you, and share the knowledge. And let's continue demystifying the sister locks. Because all it is, is small locks, small sections braided backwards with a special tool. And the type of tool you use determines whether it's a pleasurable experience or not. And how the tool is used determines whether it's going to be pro looking after your follicles or not. But all this is, is small partings of curly hair braided backwards, encouraged to lock, right? Encouraged to lock and there's no mystery to it. We have been doing it for years and years and years. Parting our hair in small sections um, to encourage it to lock. And that's all we're doing. So be careful of how your hair is pulled and forced into getting locked. Because if you just do it gently, the hair settles and the hair locks for itself without any painful retightening experiences. If that makes sense. So that's what it is. It's backward braids with a tool parted in small sections. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to demystify it. Because the more we demystify it, the more, many more of us will be locking up our hair and understanding that it's just another very good idea, a very good way to kind of live through our lives, our busy lives. Because me, I do not miss my afro. When people ask, do you miss your afro? Let me show you. If I miss my afro, I take the baby hair that's not locked, you see, and I stroke it. And I can even twist it. And I can roll it. And that's it. I don't miss my locks. Because I've got loose hair to um, play with. 
So I'm going to sign off. Thanks, guys. Much love. Stay blessed. Stay connected. Bye.